Hello and welcome to Drawing with Mr. Maddie. I'll be your host, Mr. Maddie. You may not notice right now, but I do have my Bob Ross wig on, so let's make some magic. Okay, today our objective is to draw cubes in one point perspective. What we're going to do is take these two dimensional squares, these shapes, and turn them into forms. Remember, 2D equals shape, pardon my bad writing, 3D equals form, F-O-R-M, and 2D equals S-H-A-P-E. Okay, let's talk about forms and shapes. So first things first, I want you to make a dot in the middle of your page on the horizon line. Let's go ahead and label that while we're at it. The horizon line is spelled H-O-R-I-Z-O-N, and that's where all things disappear. This is where your lines vanish. In fact, <laughs> on the, the horizon line, which is where the sun rises and sets, we okay, your vanishing point, hope I said that right, vanishing point, is the point where all of your lines converge, okay? Now, what I want to show you is how to make these things pop. I know we have a little experience with this, so let's start with making our corners connect to our vanishing point that lives on our horizon line. So we'll start right here. I like to make laser beam noises on each of the corners okay now it's tempting to go up here leave this alone for now we don't need to mess with that those far corners that are away from the vanishing point let's just leave those alone let's just focus on the corners that are closest to to your vanishing point okay now it doesn't have to be perfect but I do want you to use a ruler and I would like you to connect your corners okay Connect your corners to that magical point where all things just seem to disappear. Okay. Now, notice that I used red uh, so you could see my original shapes a little bit more bold. You are just going to use your pencil and you want to draw as lightly as possible. You really want to draw as light as you can. Okay. And the reason why is we tend to make happy little accidents, as old Bobby Ross would say. And I find that having a nice light line to erase is a lot easier than having a really dark one. So as you're drawing, when that pencil touches that paper, you want to be as light as possible. Okay, When that pencil touches that paper, be as light as as possible. Now here's the fun part. This is where you get to be your own kind of detective. Okay, You can use a ruler. I prefer using a ruler. Uh, but what I want you to do is snip these lines with vertical and horizontal lines to make it look like it's uh, jumping right off the page. So notice that I'm just gonna keep these two lines parallel and I'm just going to put it wherever I want. Okay, these two hash marks equal parallel. And when I'm done, I like to go a step further and darken that outside line, the contour line. When I say outside, you say contour, outside, contour, outside, contour. When I say contour, you say line, contour, line. I love contour lines. But you'll see that when things are top and to the left, you can see the side and the bottom. When things are just on the horizon line, you're just going to see the side of it. And what I'm doing is adding parallel lines to the top edge and top side to create these funky looking cubes. Now this might be new to you and kind of confusing, so if you fall in that category, make sure that you're buddying up with a friend. 
Okay. So, I'm cruising along here and connecting these lines together to create forms, right? And I started simply by using squares placed in each corner, or one, two, three on the left, one, two, three on the right. I had one square above my horizon line, one square on the horizon line, and one square below. Okay, this is very helpful when practicing drawing in perspective. Okay. Now this should be review for most of us, but your objective, as noted, is to draw in perspective and I would say in terms of success criteria, let's see if you can get at least one, two, three, four, five, six cubes in perspective on your page. Okay, I want to get the the juices flowing for our upcoming perspective unit that we'll be jumping into in a couple weeks. And I want you to get these skills back, okay? Um, if you're a real rock star, I would challenge you next to go ahead and uh, draw some figures in here. Keep it loose. Keep it fast. I want you to draw some figures jumping around through space. Maybe they're fighting. Maybe they're playing. I don't know. But once you add these different elements, people and space, it you suddenly have a really interesting composition. Okay. Um, so let's do this. Let's take ten minutes for you to draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cubes, or squares that is, and turn them into cubes using a vanishing point and one point perspective. When you're done, give them a shade, play with your light source, and add some figures in there because we're going to be jumping into our perspective unit soon. This is just review, but I look forward to doing some two point perspective in the near future. And that brings us to the rationale. Hey, why are we doing this? The reason why I like to practice one point perspective is because it's fun, it is challenging, at the same time it's kind of like a game, right? It's a it's a nice game to keep your drawing skills sharp. And the more you play, the better you are. Haters gonna hate, players gonna play. The more practice you have with this, the more confident your drawing skills will be. So, for me to you, thank you for doing a quick little draw along. Take about 10 to 15 minutes to do this. And when you're done, please check the Google Classroom stream for the rest of your tasks. Okay. Have a wonderful day. Have fun playing around with your drawing here. Make it weird. Make it fun. Maybe add some elements of realism here. Maybe this is a road. But it's your piece. Just a quick little warm-up. I have this grid paper for you to use right in the front part of the room underneath the smart board. Have an awesome day. Take care.